Valley fever is nothing new. Scientifically known as coccidioidomycosis, it is an insidious disease caused by the inhalation of airborne coccidioidous fungal spores. They are called arthrocnidia and are released from arid soil in the desert southwest region of the United States. These are known as endemic areas to valley fever. Internationally, this fungus is also endemic to northern Mexico and parts of Central America and South America. This parasitic fungal disease is neither rare nor benign. Valley fever was first discovered before the turn of the 20th century, but became increasingly important as more and more people started to move to the area. The significance of valley fever has increased with the migration from Dust Bowl areas during the Great Depression, the training of the Army Air Corps during World War II, and the recent population boom in the Southwest. Valley fever plagued mankind long before it had been discovered by science, as evidenced by the discovery of thousand-year-old Native American bones that had clearly been attacked by the fungus. It has been a part of the desert southwest for centuries, but its threats to public health could be ended if the vaccine and cure projects are funded to completion. Valley fever can be contracted easily because everyone needs to breathe. For this reason, everyone needs to know what this disease can do. Valley fever can affect anyone, from the unborn child to the great grandparent. It is a major problem for many animals as well. Valley fever has been regarded as a race-specific biological weapon, but many people of every race have suffered or even died from it. Pregnant women, organ transplant recipients, diabetics, and people with immunocompromised states are also more likely to have severe cases. The fact that valley fever has some very specific risk factors should never minimize the fact that even the healthiest person can be infected and may suffer the most debilitating or deadly forms of the disease. Even more importantly, in surveys and questionnaires from thousands of people who contacted valleyfeversurvivor.com, the vast majority of people had no underlying illness and yet contracted very serious, often chronic, and sometimes fatal cases of valley fever. Hospital data from the state inpatient database backs this up, and it proves that many more people overall are sickened or killed by valley fever who happen to be healthy before their cases. Valley fever is spread when soil in an endemic area with cassioidous growth is disturbed. This has happened due to a variety of reasons. Construction, earthquakes, archaeology, children digging in the sand, cars driving through an area, and even wind that blew spores 500 miles out of the endemic areas. Anything that can disturb the ground can also release these spores into the air where you can breathe them in. Even if you have never been to the southwest, information about valley fever is still important to know because of transmission by fomites. Fomites are objects such as clothing, packing materials, fruits and vegetables, nursery plants, airplanes, cars, or virtually anything that can carry Cassidioidus spores out of the endemic zones. Since fomites can be shipped anywhere in the world, valley fever has caused problems everywhere. Watch for Valley Fever Survivors continuing educational video series.